I, I saw you've been on 500 podcasts, I think I saw. Uh, probably close to 700 by now. Ooh-wee. Well, t- what's like, what kind of started your journey? Because yeah, I, I really read through your bio and your background and you're an author and a speaker and podcast. I mean, you're, you're, you're doing stuff that I aspire to, to do, man. And like, what, what uh, kicked off this journey of yours? Because I saw previously you were a police officer and yes. I'd love to know more, a little more about your story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but from starting with podcasting, I, you know, I started a, a, a speaking business just as COVID hit. And like so many other businesses, had to figure out how to retool and and deliver your service in a different way. And somebody reached out to me and said, would you like to be a guest on my podcast? And I said, sure. What's a podcast? <laughs> and I, literally, I did. I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I, well, you know, we kind of record a discussion and then we put it on social media. And I'm like, okay. I, honestly, I, I, it, it was, I had literally post-it notes all around the camera. They would ask a question, Brady, I would lean in and I'd read the post-it note. It, I, I was terrible. It was horrible. It, it was absolutely lousy. But a funny story, probably about eight months ago, I did a podcast with a gentleman who is a former NFL player. This guy's like six foot six, like 340 pounds, huge guy you know, makes it to the pinnacle of professional sports. And we were talking afterwards and he said, you know, Terry, when I started my podcast, I didn't think anybody listened to me because I didn't think anybody would care what I had to say. And I'm like, Marcus, I, I mean, you made it to the pinnacle of sports. How could you possibly not think anybody? And his brother's in the in the National Football League Hall of Fame. I'm like, how could you possibly not think? But that just goes to show you that, you know, even – I don't care how successful, how important, how influential you are. You There's always that. And I hate the word imposter syndrome. Words, I guess, imposter syndrome. But, I, I, you know, it's like, why would you not think that your your life, your experience, your story is valuable in some way? So that started me on my, my podcast journey. And like I said, I'm probably closing in at about 700 podcasts with people all over the world. It, man. So I, how did you, did you start off? So you started off with like someone that reached out to you. How, how many episodes did you get through before you were like, all right, I'm starting to kind of figure this out. I mean, were the first 10 just garbage or how, how what was the progression like? Yeah, it's funny. Cause I, I had a, I had a discussion with my publisher. You started in 2020 and I love that he said that because it's that magic three year period. I keep hearing about the amount of people where they're like, I started during COVID and now it's 2023 and they popped. They started in 17 and they popped in 2020. Like, so what was the progression from uh, if you'd never been on a podcast before that point, how have you gotten to speaking and, and, and authoring a book? And like, what started, I guess? Uh, I guess my life and, and really for the last 11 years, I've been dealing with battling a rare form of cancer, a rare form of melanoma. Most people think of melanoma as too much exposure to the sun and it affects the, the melon, the pigment in your in your skin. My form of melanoma has nothing to do with exposure to the sun. It, it's a rare form that appears on the bottom of the hand or the bottom of the hands, the bottom of the feet or the palms of the hands. And so I, 2012, I, I had a my own company and I'm also coaching girls high school basketball. And I had this callus break open on the bottom of my foot right below my third toe. And I don't think much of it because as a coach, you're on your feet a lot. But after a yeah. few weeks of it not healing, I went to see a podiatrist, a foot doctor friend of mine, and took an x-ray. And he said, Terry, I think you have a cyst in there and I can cut it out. And he did. And he showed it to me. It was just a little gelatin sack with some white fat in it, no dark spots, no blood, nothing that gave either one of us concern. But fortunately or unfortunately, he sent it off to pathology to have it looked at. And then two weeks later, I get the call from him. And as I said, he's a friend of mine. And the more difficulty he's having explaining to me what's going on, the more frightened I'm becoming until finally he just laid it out for me. He said, Terry, I've been a doctor for 25 years. I have never seen the form of cancer that you have. And, you know, he recommended I go to MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. And so I did. And that started my 11-year journey. I had my foot amputated. 2018, I had my leg amputated in 2020 during the middle of the COVID pandemic. 
Um, and so all of that has gotten me to, I need a purpose. I have to have something to do. I, I remember when I graduated from college, my father was dying and he had end stage breast cancer back in the 1980s. And they didn't know how to treat a man with breast cancer. So they pretty much told him to go home and die. But he lived another three and a half years. And I believe he did because he had a purpose. He was in real estate. Yeah. And he actually worked up till two weeks before he died. And I, I sort of tucked that in the back of my mind and said, well, you know, when it's my time, I'm going to have to, to consider that. So what was I going to do? Here I, I, you know, it was COVID. I, I have tumors in my lungs. I just lost my leg. I'm sure as heck not going to be around people. How can I deliver my message? How can I get my, the word out of my experience and what I've learned? And podcasting just seemed to be the way to go. And now that things have opened up, I'm, I'm able to speak more either virtually or in person. So it's it's just kind of, you know, as it's really kind of unfolded as I've just let it. I didn't try to force it. And so when I have treatments and I, I'm treated every three weeks for an entire week at the hospital for the tumors I still have in my lungs, and then I have two weeks off. And during those two weeks, I am guests on podcasts like yours. And it's it, it gives me something to do instead of sit around and say, gee, I'm probably going to die, which I probably am. But you know what? Maybe not today. So what can I yeah. do to make today positive? Get this form of the disease. It's it's just incredibly rare. It has nothing to do with the sun. And, and, and I'll tell you kind of a funny story. When I was young and we had acne, our, our parents would take us to the dermatologist and they would put us under a sun lamp. They would expose us to ultraviolet rays to dry out the pimples and things like that. And, and you look back now, it's like that, that was the worst thing you could have done. But that was science back in the 1970s. I, it's funny you say that because I remember I've heard stories of my grandma back in like the 70s and the 80s. Like she would go out to the dock and just they would slather them. So I don't know if it was vegetable oil or what, but you, they're literally frying like baby oil. Out baby of oil. Them. Yeah, we yeah, use baby oil. Baby oil. <laughs> It's like, what the hell? That's wild. But I mean, back then, they just, they didn't, they had no idea. You know what I mean? No. But, um, wow. It, what does, um, I love your openness to talk about uh, the, the cancers. What does, the what does a week worth of treatment look like? Because I know with like kidney stuff, there's dialysis machines. Like what, what do they put you through for a week of skin cancer or a form of? And let me end, let me end with this story. Back in the 1950s, this true story. There was a doctor at Johns Hopkins University who did an experiment with rats. And he took rats and he put them in a tank of water that was over their head. And he wanted to see how long the average rat could tread water. And the average rat treaded water for about 15 minutes. And just as those rats were getting ready to sink and drown, he reached in, grabbed them, pulled them out, dried them off, and let them rest for a while. And then he took the exact same rats and put them back in that exact same tank of water. And the second time around, on average, those rats treaded water for 60 hours. Now, think about that. The first time, 15 minutes. You're just not going to fail. Your business isn't going to go under. You're going to die. Your, your life is over. The second time around, 60 hours, which taught me two things. Number one, the importance of hope in our lives. That Maybe not today. Maybe not next month. Maybe not even this year. But if you keep doing the things that you're doing that you know will get you to your goal, it'll eventually happen. You have to have that hope. And the second thing it taught me was just how much more our physical bodies can handle than we ever give ourselves credit for. We quit. We give up. We give in long before our body does. And I think part of that is going back to what we were talking about earlier. If you can't control your brain, your brain is going to control your body. So if you can't get on top of it, then those demons of doubt are going to come in and eventually you're going to lose the battle. 